Hi there, this is Ruzbe, a PhD candidate at COSIC KU Leuven. Today I will be presenting our paper entitled Deep Selfish Proposing in Longest Chain Proof of Stake Protocols. This is a joint work with Svetlana Nikova and Bart Prenil from COSIC KU Leuven. I start with a brief overview of the selfish mining attack. This attack was initially introduced in the context of Bitcoin, but can, it can be applied to any other longest chain based blockchains. The general idea behind this attack is that once a selfish miner mines a new block, he does not immediately publish this block uh, to the other mining nodes. He keeps the block secret and later strategically decides on the publishing time of the block. Here we can review a simple uh, scenario of the selfish mining attack. Assume that this block represents the tip of the canonical chain. Both honest miners and selfish miner mine on top of this tip. Assume that the selfish miner managed to uh, mine two consecutive blocks and the a selfish miner keeps this block private. In this case, the selfish miner can mine on top of uh, his private adversarial fork, but the honest miners are not aware of this uh, private chain, so they keep mining on top of the previous tip. Now assume that the honest miners mines a new block. In this case, uh, if the attacker publishes his adversarial fork. Since the length of the adversarial fork is greater than the honest fork, the honest miners will leave the honest chain and start mining on top of the adversarial fork. As a result of this attack, uh, one of the honest blocks get orphaned. Uh, by orphaned, we means that this block is completely valid, but it remains out of the canonical chain. As a result of selfish mining, uh, the block ratio or relative revenue of the selfish miner can increase. Here by block ratio, we mean the ratio of the number of adversarial blocks to the total number of blocks available in the canonical chain. Selfish mining attack is a well-studied attack in the context of Bitcoin, which is a proof of work based blockchain. The underlying fork choice rule uh, of Bitcoin is called the longest chain. This is a pretty simple fork choice rule, but it works quite well. According to this rule, all the miners should mine on top of the longest chain available in their view. All the proof of work was a, a big revolution to the field of consensus. It faces some limitations such as low amount of throughput or high amount of energy consumption. And because of that, during the past decade, there was a huge effort to uh, come up with some new alternatives to the proof of work. I would say the most famous one is the proof of stake consensus mechanism. In a general categorization, proof of stake protocols can be divided into different groups. Uh, the first group is the classic BFD style proof of stake protocol, such as uh, Algorand and Ethereum, the new version of the Ethereum. And uh, the second group contains those protocols that they follow the same four choice rule uh, as the one that is implemented in Bitcoin. I mean, the longest chain four choice rule. We represent this kind of protocols by LCPOS. In the context of uh, proof of stake, the longest chain fork, cho fork choice rule means that once a proposer is selected to propose a block in a specific slot, the proposer should always uh, propose his or her block on top of the longest chain available in their view. The attack that we are going to discuss in this presentation can be applied to LCPOS protocols. There exists a couple of proof, proof of stake protocols uh, that follow the longest chain rule. The most famous one is the Ouroboros, the underlying consensus mechanism of Cardano. Uh, we have Amiestar, which is the previous consensus mechanism of Tezos, and we also have a Snow White. In this paper, we analyze the selfish mining attack in the context of longest chain proof of stake protocols. First of all, there is no mining in proof of stake, and because of that, we use the term selfish proposing rather than selfish mining to refer to this attack. We have used both theoretical methods and implementation methods to analyze this attack. Theoretical methods can be applied whenever we are dealing with simplified LCPOS environments, but whenever we want to analyze this attack under the more practical version of LCPOS protocols, uh, we can use the deep queue learning tool implemented in this paper. I would say uh, the most important takeaway of this paper is that selfish proposing in LCPOS protocols is more destructive compared to the 
compared to the selfish mining in proof of work. By more destructive, we mean that the adversary can achieve a higher block ratio and the adversary can perform selfish proposing with a lower amount of stake share. In the upcoming slide, we try to clarify these claims. There are two main factors that uh, make selfish proposing more destructive compared to the selfish mining in proof of work. The first factor is the nothing at stake phenomenon, and the second factor is proposal predictability. Uh, by nothing at stake phenomenon, we mean that in proof of stake protocols, generating multi multiple blocks is costless. And because of that, a proposer or an adversary can easily change the content of a block before publishing that block. The other factor is the proposer predictability in proof of stake protocols. A proposer can predict some information regarding the future blocks. So let's see how these factors can affect the selfish proposing. First, we discuss the effect of nothing at stake phenomenon <clears throat> at selfish proposing attack. The nothing at stake selfish proposing was introduced in 2020 by Matthews. Uh, in this paper, the authors added a few number of actions to the uh, set of possible actions of selfish mining in proof of work. So let's see the general idea of this attack. Assume that uh, we are under a proof of work mechanism. Uh, the block zero is the tip of the blockchain. Assume that the attacker mines a new block and keeps this block secret. Now assume that the attacker is unlucky and the next two blocks are mined by the honest miners. Uh, in this scenario, maybe the best action that the attacker can take is just to give up on the adversarial fork and start mining on top of block number three. Now assume that the attacker is lucky and he, the attacker can mine two consecutive blocks. If we are in a proof of work mechanism, then the block number one of the attacker is orphaned forever and there is no chance for the attacker to revive the block one. But if we face the same situation under an LC proof of stake protocol, then since the block four is not published yet, the attacker can easily change the content of block four. So the attacker can change the parent of block number four and connect block number four to block number one. In this way, the attacker can revive block one in, the, in an LCPOS protocol. This shows that the number of possible uh, actions in LCPOS protocol is greater than that in the proof of work. In our paper, we try to generalize the idea of the nothing at stake selfish proposing. We use Markov chain to analyze this attack. In the Markov chain, each state represents a fork race between the adversarial fork and the honest fork, and each action consists of two different sub-actions. The second sub-action is completely similar to the actions that we had in proof of work, selfish mining, but the sub-action number one is new. We call this sub-action as jump, and this jump specifies the starting point of the adversarial fork. To see the impact of the nothing at the stake phenomenon on the selfish proposing attack, we analyze this attack under the LCPOS protocols with perfect randomness. In proof of stake protocols, time uh, is divided into slots. Each slot has a, ran has a unique randomness, which is used to assign a specific proposer to that slot. Here, perfect randomness means that uh, the slot randomness is not revealed before the start of a slot. And therefore, no one can predict the proposer of a specific slot in the future. Therefore, the only difference that we have uh, in selfish proposing attack under the LCPOS protocol with perfect randomness and the selfish mining attack in proof of work is the nothing at the stake phenomenon. We try to answer this question that what is the minimum amount of a stake share that makes selfish proposing the dominant strategy compared to the honest proposing uh, in the LCPOS protocols with perfect randomness. But before reviewing the result, we need to define the term communication capability. This term is defined as the ratio of honest proposers who propose their blocks on top of the adversarial fork whenever there are two forks with the same height in the blockchain network. 
one can consider communication capability equals to 50% as the normal situation that occurs in the blockchain network. There is a famous bond for the uh, selfish mining in the proof of work that indicates that whenever the attacker's communication capability equals to 50%, the minimum amount of mining share that uh, makes selfish mining the dominant strategy compared to the honest mining uh, is equal to 25%. So if the attackers own uh, less than 25% of mining share, he should follow the honest mining strategy. We prove that this bond in proof of a stake with perfect randomness can be reduced to 24.20%. And for communication capability zero, uh, where the um, profitability threshold in the optimal proof of work is equal to 32.9%, this bond can be reduced to 32.37%. Uh, As you can see, there is a reduction in the profitability threshold. Uh, but this reduction is not too much. Now let's see the effect of predictability on the selfish proposing attack. By predictability, we mean if anyone can predict the future block proposers or miners. One of the advantages of proof of work protocols is that these protocols are not predictable. Uh, this is because in proof of work, the next miner is anyone who can solve the puzzle. And before solving the puzzle, no one, even the puzzle solver, has no idea that who is going to be the next block miner. But proof of stake protocols suffer from a degree of predictability. This is because that in proof of stake protocols, time is divided into slots, and we are in need of an algorithm that can uh, assign a proposer to each of these slots. And usually, the output of this algorithm can be determined when we are far from that slot, and this implies that we have predictability in proof-of-stake protocols. In our paper, we divide proof-of-stake protocols into two groups. Uh, the first group is the full predictable proof-of-stake protocol, such as Ethereum. In this kind of protocols, the adversary can predict the proposers of all the upcoming slots. As the second group, we have the semi-predictable proof-of-stake protocols such as Cardano and Algorand. These protocols are uh, based on verifiable random function. Uh, in this kind of protocols, the adversary can only predict those slots whose slot leader is the adversary himself. So the adversary uh, does not have any information about the remaining slots. Those uh, slots can be empty or they can have one or even more number of uh, honest proposers. To see the effect of predictability, consider this example. Assume that we are under the full predictable model. The attacker has mined block number one and he wants to decide whether to publish this block or uh, to keep this block secret. If he knows that the uh, sequence of future block is something like this, then probably uh, the best action that the adversary can take is to keep block one secret and perform the selfish proposing attack because he can be pretty sure that in the future uh, he can use the future blocks to orphan the honest work. But if he knows that he has no block in the uh, near future sequence of blocks, then maybe the best option for the attacker is just to uh, publish block one and follow the honest strategy because he has a low chance of orphaning the honest blocks in the future using his single block. Similar to the full predictable model, the adversary can benefit from the semi-predictable model. Although here the adversary does not have full information regarding the block proposers of all the upcoming slots. Having information regarding uh, the adversarial slots can also help the attacker. Uh, for instance, consider this scenario that again, the adversary wants to decide whether to publish block one or keep this block secret. If he knows that in the future, in the near future slots, there exists a couple of adversarial slots, then maybe the best option for the attacker is just to uh, perform selfish proposing and keep block one secret, but if he knows that in the near future he has no chance of proposing a block, maybe the best option for the attacker is just to uh, follow the honest strategy and publish block one. So this is 
So these examples show that predictability can help the attacker to reduce the risk of losing his blocks during the selfish proposing attack. An interesting point here is that in predictable LCPS protocol, selfish proposing is the dominant strategy even for an attacker with stake share equal to epsilon. In our paper, we use the theoretical methods to analyze the selfish proposing attack under a simplified predictable LCPS protocol. Uh, specifically, we assume that we are under the full predictable model and the adversarial communication capability is equal to zero. We use the random walk on a grid. Uh, to give you a general idea, we assume that uh, the x-axis uh, on this grid represent the adversarial fault links and the y-axis on this grid represents the honest fault links. Whenever the adversary uh, proposes a new block, we move one step to the right, and whenever the honest, minor, honest proposers propose a new block, we move one step to the up. So this shows that uh, uh, each state in the fork race can be represented using a, a pass on top of discrete. And if in the future, at one point, this path reaches to the line y equal to x minus one, we can be pretty sure that uh, the attack would be successful because this shows that um, the adversarial fork lanes is greater than the honest fork lanes. In our paper, we presented an optimal strategy for the selfish proposing under the full predictable LCPS protocols whenever uh, the attacker's communication capability is equal to zero. This graph represents the block ratio of the attacker as a function of its stake share or mining share under different environment. The lowest line, uh, which is the green line, belongs to the block ratio of the honest strategy. Then we have the blue curve, which belongs to the block ratio of optimal selfish mining strategy, and the upper curve belongs to the block ratio of the optimal uh, full predictable uh, LCPOS selfish proposing. As you can see, predictability can significantly increase the attacker's block ratio. Uh, for instance, let's consider the attacker's block ratio when his stake or mining share is equal to uh, 30%. Since the attacker's communication capability is equal to zero, uh, the optimal strategy that the attacker can take in proof of work is the honest strategy, and therefore uh, his block ratio in the proof of in the proof of work is equal to his mining share, which is 30%. But in the full predictable LCPS protocol, using the optimal strategy of selfish proposing, the attacker can increase his block ratio. Uh, by around uh, 7%, which is a considerable amount of increase. So far, we have analyzed the selfish proposing attack under the simplified models, such as models uh, with perfect randomness or full predictable models. Now we want to see that how we can analyze this attack under more realistic environments, such as semi-predictable LCPS protocols. To obtain the optimal strategy of selfish mining in proof of work, one can use Markov decision process, but unfortunately, MDP cannot be uh, used in the context of proof of stake. The reason is that MDP is useful whenever we are dealing with a uh, limited size of a state and action, but in proof of stake, because of the nothing at the stake phenomenon, the number of actions uh, has increased, and most importantly, the size of a state is uh, much bigger than the size of a state in proof of work because now states need to store information regarding the future block proposers. To uh, overcome this issue, we have implemented a deep queue learning tool which can be used to analyze the selfish proposing attack under the more realistic environment. Deep queue learning is a type of reinforcement learning. In reinforcement learning, we have two entities known as the agent and the environment. The goal of the agent is to maximize his payoff. To do so, the agent interacts with the environment. The environment can be considered as a black box for the agent. And through these interactions, the agent gets gradually trained. Uh, in our implementation, 
the selfish proposal plays the role of the agent and the environment is the LCPOS protocol. On this slide, we present the results of our implementation. This graph represents the block ratio of an attacker with a stake or mining share equal to one third as a function of its communication capability. The green bar, which is the lowest bar, represents the block ratio of optimal selfish mining in proof of work. Then we have the block ratio of uh, selfish proposing between POS protocol with perfect randomness. Um, then we have the selfish proposing in semi predictable proof of stake. And then we have the block ratio of full predictable selfish proposing. Let's compare the results for the scenario when. The attacker's communication capability is equal to 25%. The maximum amount of block ratio that the attacker can achieve in a proof of work protocol is almost around 35%. But in a semi predictable proof of stake protocol, the attacker can increase this amount to around 40%. And in a full predictable proof of stake, this amount can be increased to 43%. As you can see, even in a semi-predictable LCPOS protocol, the attacker can increase his block ratio uh, by a significant percentage. Most of the papers in the field of selfish mining have used uh, communication capability as a simple parameter to represent the network condition, which is, of course, the naive representation. To analyze this attack under a more realistic network condition rather than just um, giving communication capability as a simple parameter to our environment, we can implement the geographical location uh, of the attacker's node. For instance, we have implemented uh, the selfish proposing attack under a semi-predictable LCPOS protocol for two different conditions. Uh, the first condition blinds uh, to the situation where the adversarial nodes are concentrated, they are close to each other. Uh, for an attacker with a stake share equal to one third, the block ratio that the attacker can receive is equal to 40% under the uh, non-distributed condition. But in the second condition, we have implemented the nodes uh, of attackers in the distributed model. In this way, the attacker's block ratio can be increased to 44%. As you can see, uh, the more distributed the attacker's nodes are, uh, the higher block ratio the attacker can achieve. As a conclusion, I want to emphasize again that selfish proposing attack in LCPOS protocols can be more destructive compared to the selfish mining in proof of work. As we have already seen, nothing at the state phenomenon uh, can result in a slight increase in the selfish proposing block ratio, but proposer predictability can significantly increase the uh, attacker's block ratio, especially when the attacker's communication capability is relatively low. As the last point that I want to share is to discuss about this question that whether an increase in block ratio can lead to attacker's profitability or not. In the context of Bitcoin and proof of work, it is shown that before a difficulty adjustment mechanism, selfish mining cannot be profitable. The reason is that if the difficulty is not adjusted, no matter how many honest blocks are orphaned, the attacker cannot mine blocks faster. And because of that, he cannot increase his profitability. But after the difficulty adjustment mechanism, since the difficulty of mining uh, has reduced, the attacker starts to gain profit. Answering this question in the context of LCPOS protocol depends on the uh, underlying reward mechanism. Uh, for instance, in Cardano, uh, the rewards of each epoch is distributed proportional to the block ratio of the proposers at the end of the epoch. This shows that uh, in the Cardano, the attacker can immediately increase his profit if he starts uh, the selfish proposing attack. And this again shows that selfish proposing attack in the context of Cardano can be more threatening compared to selfish mining in Bitcoin. Yes, that was my presentation. Thanks for your attention.